All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to do something really cool. I want to find all the matrices whose square is equal to itself. And I will do this without any calculation. I will just use pure linear algebra theory, which tells you that this theory is actually very important. And also what I like about this, there's a very nice geometric interpretation to this. This is why linear algebra is sometimes called linear geometry. And that's very important because I am not an algebraist. I'm an analyst, but I still like linear algebra, which probably means there's not much algebra involved. And first of all, in order to a squared to be defined, the number of rows of a has to equal the number of columns of a. Uh, otherwise, uh, wouldn't, matrix multiplication wouldn't make sense. And indeed, what I'll show is actually that it's not only true for matrices, but true for linear transformations. So I will show, I will find all the linear transformations whose square is equal to itself. I don't know if that's called idempotent or something. But anyway, t squared equals to t. And what's very important, you can't just cancel out t and say it's the identity because there are many other interesting examples. And here's the claim. So t goes from a vector space to itself. It turns out you can decompose the vector space into two very nice subspaces or axes if you want. So claim actually v equals to the following. It's the direct sum of the null space of t and what I like to call f of t. So press f for f of t. And the reason I write f, it's because it's a set of all fixed points. So it's a set of vectors y in v, such that t of y equals y. So it turns out you can uh, write v you can decompose your whole space in terms of two axes. One, where t sends all the vectors of that axis to zero, and the other one, maybe, yeah, maybe let me switch that to, you'll see why. And another one where, so first of all, t where t sends any vector to the axis of to zero, and f of t, where t doesn't do anything to f of t. So, it's clearly, it makes it invariant, so it's a fixed point, and uh, I'll give you, I'll tell you why this is useful. Then we can tell you exactly what t does geometrically. Just one little thing, what does this weird O plus mean? It means the following. First of all, V is the sum of N of t plus F of t. So any vector can be written as a sum of a vector in the null space plus a vector in the fixed point space. And moreover, those spaces, basically their intersection is trivial. So the only intersecting the zero vector. Okay, let me show why this is true. So it's a very nice exercise in linear algebra. So why is any vector x in V the sum of two vectors, one in the null space and one in the fixed point space, it's because of this incredible calculation. You can write x as x minus t plus t. So indeed, with this cancellation, you wrote x as a sum of two things. And all we need to show is that this is in the null space and this is in the fixed point space. OK, why is this in the null space? Well, let's calculate t of that vector. Well, that's t of x minus tt of x, but tt, it's t squared, which is t. Remember, it's a very important assumption that the square of t is just t. And so that's t of x minus t of x, and that's zero. So in other words, what does t do? It sends x minus t of x to the zero vector. So that vector is precisely in the null space. On the other hand, let's show that t fixes this vector. So let's show that if you apply t to t of x, you just get t of x. 
but that's just t squared of x, and that's t of x. So you see, t does nothing to t of x. That's why it's a fixed point. That's very cool. So you can come up with lots of examples of fixed points of t. You just start with x, you just apply t of it, and automatically it becomes a fixed point. Okay, so that was the first part. You see, you wrote any vector in V as the sum of those two vectors. And lastly, we need to show that those two vectors have a trivial intersection. So suppose uh, x is in both the null space and a fixed point. Then, on the one hand, t of x equals 0, because it's in the null space. On the other hand, because it's a fixed point, t of x equals x. So, what do we know about t of x? It's both 0 and equal to x, so x equals 0. Which means precisely that the intersection is not empty. Okay, now... We have that, so it's very nice. Basically, your vector space V, you can think of it as having two axes, let's say in R2, one being the null space, the other one being the fixed point space. Now, let me tell you precisely what T does. It's nothing else other than a projection. It turns out all the matrices whose square is equal to itself are projection matrices. And why am I claiming it's a projection? Well, suppose you can somehow write z, any vector z. We know it's the sum of a fixed point and a null space vector. So z can be, it turns out, uniquely written as x plus y where you can think of x as being the x-coordinate and y being the y-coordinate. Then what is t of z? Well, that's t of x plus y, and that's t of x plus t of y. But what is t of x? x, in this case, is in the fixed point space, so t of x is x, and t of y, it's in the null space, so it's a zero vector, so it's x. So t of z equals x. So what does t do? It takes this arbitrary vector z and just squishes it on this fixed point space. So t, in order to think of it as follows, so it's sort of t of x, y is just x comma zero in some sense. Right, so it is a projection. So indeed t is a projection. of x, of z if you want, on f of t. It's a projection on f of t along this null space. So in the direction of this null space vector of f of t on n of t. And conversely, it turns out any projection, you can also write it in this form, you know, that it's uh, in other words, a projection, what does that mean? It means that if V is the direct sum of W1 and W2, then uh, T of Z, well, you can write it as T of W1 plus W2 in a unique way, at least where one is in W1, the other one is in W2, and the projection, let's say, on W2 means it's just W2. And so in particular, you can also show that projections on a subspace are uh, satisfied t squared equals t. But this is kind of obvious because if you project on a space t and then you apply t again, you won't end up anywhere else. You just stay at this place. So this is cool in my opinion. So this answers the question about linear transformations. And the question is, what about matrices? So there's actually a nice characterization of this as well. And let me talk about this just for one second. It turns out I can also find exactly all the, what all the matrices look like as follows. So remember, V can be written as a direct sum of the null space and the fixed point space. 
which means that if you have a basis for the null space and a basis for the fixed point space, you can just add the two bases together to get a basis for V. So let, let's say V1 up to VP be a basis for F of T. There's a reason I write it that way. And VP plus one up to VN be a basis for N of T, the null space. Then, what does T do? So remember, to figure out the matrix of a linear transformation, you just calculate T as each basis vector, and you just write it in terms of your basis vectors. So it turns out V1 up to Vn, it's a basis for V. And then how do you get the matrix with respect to that basis? So then A, which is the matrix of T with respect to that basis, well look, what does T do? On all those vectors there, well T of VI is just VI because it's a fixed point. So if you start at all those vectors here, V1 up to VP, well T doesn't do anything to that vector, so if you write it in terms of V1 up to Vp, you just get 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, up to the pth entry, 1, 0, 0, 0. Because that's how you evaluate the matrix. You evaluate T of Vi and express it in terms of your Vi's, and you, get, and you just write the coordinates as follows. On the other hand, on the null space, well, T of Vj is just zero. So by definition of the null space, so on all those other vectors, you just get zero. So what does the matrix of T look like? Well, it's one, 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 bunch of ones, and then bunch of zeros. And this is with respect to the spaces beta. What if you want to have the general case? Then you just use a change of coordinates matrix, which basically says the general case is this matrix conjugated by any invertible matrix. So if you do P, this P inverse, then it actually gives you all the matrices which satisfy that T squared equals to T. So here's a couple of examples. I mean, if you want a two by two case, we have one, zero, 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 the identity, of course, and that corresponds to no zeros, which is also okay, but also the zero matrix, and also zero, 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 one. And by the way, you can always like switch to, and it's still okay, like I think uh, zero, one, one, zero is also fine. So up to switching the columns and up to this conjugation with invertible matrices, the only matrices whose, whose square is equal to itself, I guess at least in the real case, are matrices with bunch of ones and bunch of zeros on the diagonal. And again, we didn't, we never actually calculated A squared. That's what you have to understand. Theory of linear algebra is so useful even to answer those geometric problems. And that's why, again, linear algebra is sometimes called linear geometry. So I think that's amazing. And probably more videos to come. Uh, all right, so I hope you liked this linear algebra excursion. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.